Alright guys, welcome back to more story of my uncle. We'll be continuing off where we last left off in the last episode. Um, in the crystal village and on the edge of what seems to be a kind of point, I guess. What's over there? Huh, that's strange. There's so many areas to explore. This village is actually pretty big. Oh, forgot that I had boost when I do that. Maddie was silent for a while. It seemed like she was thinking hard on something. Oh shit. That's new. What? Oh, that great. Good day. Here's a bow to ice skate. Though I'd take the other one if I were you. That one goes back to the outpost. Um, I, um, wait a minute. I was thinking. I, I don't know if I should go with you. I mean, I want to, but I also want to, well, stay here. Maybe it's strange, but I just feel like these people liked me and accepted me for who I am. Kinda like you. I want to be with you too, and help you find Fred. I don't know what I want the most. I told Madeline that I would accept whatever choice she made. I just never thought about it until now that maybe, maybe it wasn't Fred I was looking for when I came with you. Maybe I was just looking for a way out, somewhere to be free. And I know that if anyone can find Fred, it's you. If you meet him, when you meet him, tell him to come see me, okay? I promised. Thank you. I'm glad I met you. And 
It won't be the same without you around. Goodbye, friend. I said goodbye to Maddie, and I had a feeling that this was the last time I'd see her. But even in this sad moment, I was happy for her. She had found a place where she belonged. There was a dampness in the air that reminded me of the hot summer nights back home. But as the sun was setting, I could feel the chill creeping up on me. And the path we were traveling on seemed to lead us into a second ice age. Winter was coming. That's me. Can't go that way, huh? Into the caves again, and now it was just me, alone in these cold, barren halls of ice. But Fred had been here, and now what the? Oh. I could feel it. I was getting close. Something Life wasn't flares. right. The grapple device's energy beam was somehow reflected off of the ice, and I couldn't get a grip. I had to look for areas where the ice was not so thick. This was going to be a challenge. So, I can't actually grapple onto the ice, like... Oh, I can grab onto that part. Like those diamond heads, shards or some shit. That is a lot of blocks. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? Well, I keep accidentally pressing the thing two times. I suddenly felt the earth starting to move beneath my feet, and my mind wandered back to how the strays might Whoa. have used the crystals as a source of power to keep their cities afloat. I decided it was best to hurry back the way I came before this whole room came apart. Ah, uh, I see. I messed up already, so... Eh.
tell me to go back, right? So... Oh yeah. The crystals also reflected the grapple beam, but as they did, they seemed to recharge the grappling device. Ah, uh, I see. Now... So when I grapple the crystals, they actually um, give me my recharge instead of me having to land on land, which usually is what I gain the recharge from. And I messed up. Great. I just land on. That was lucky. Views. <laughs> Am I supposed to go more? Oh, I'm supposed to go up. Move. Mm-hmm. 
God, what level? God damn it. hard and felt the impact vibrate through my body. The suit had protected me, but it was in bad shape. The rocket boots were worst off. The crash had ruined the functionality completely. I knew that if I stayed here to fix them, I would probably freeze to death. I had no other choice than to press on. Mm-hmm. 
Oh no. I'm stuck in the restart. <laughs> God damn it. Supposed to go. How could Fred leave stuff behind everywhere? How much was he carrying? As I remember it, Fred wasn't that good at keeping track of all his things. Like you. Hey, it's not like you're any better. Sorry. Anyway, Fred counted on losing a few things on each of his journeys. He always brought more stuff than he needed. For a paddling trip we had, he brought so many life jackets we could barely fit ourselves in the canoes. Isn't it hard to lose track of a life jacket if you're wearing it? Uh, <laughs> good point. I guess he didn't really think of that. Oh, I forgot I don't have the power up anymore. I found another one of Fred's campsite, noticeably newer than the others. The fire was still smoldering, and I could faintly pick up the smell of the aftershave he always used. I was closing in on him. I could feel it. He had left some tools behind that I could use to repair my boots. That should do it. Good as new. God damn it. <laughs> Buried beneath the ice, you could still see signs of what this place had once been. Something not unlike the caves where the village lay. The ice age must have come suddenly, washing over it like a freezing tsunami. Now it lay desolated, haunting anyone who dared visit with falling stalactites, sharp icicles, and its bottomless depths.
I like an issue here. Yeah. <laughs> come this way alone too. I took some comfort in knowing that whatever problems I face now, Fred would have faced them too. And beaten them. If he could do it, I could do it too. Please don't drop me. Oh my.
That was pretty fun. dark all around me, but there was a light at the end of the tunnel. And there he is, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Uncle Fred. Hello? Nephew? Uncle Fred, I finally found him. My little boy. I'm glad to see you. Yeah, and you're wearing all the suit I made you. Troubles I went through. How can you be here? I said that I found the suit in his workshop and that I came looking for him. I'm sorry for being away for so long. But I've been busy down here, you see. The frog people. That was an experiment of mine. Do you remember the eggs I found before? Oh, shit. I sent them here by accident and I had to follow. By the time I got here, they were already growing. These caves were empty before, but my experiment has made them full of life. I've conducted research on them and documented everything about them. And I built a new crystal-powered pad to be able to get back to my colleagues, show them how fantastic this all is. I interrupted Fred and told him about Maddie, how we came all the way to Starhaven together, and that I had promised to ask him if he would go see her That's there. That's kind of creepy. What the fuck is that with eyes? My little Maddie. I, I should have taken her to see Starhaven long ago. She was always so curious about the strays. Well, I left her. I wanted to protect her. Or rather, protect myself from losing her. I've changed my mind. I'm not going home. What does research or praise matter when I can be here with these creatures? They need me. And it's just as well. I don't trust this pad for more than one ride anyway. You need that ride. I didn't want to go home. And I asked if I could stay with him and Maddie instead. I'm sorry, nephew. As much as I enjoy having you here, you must go home. Explore the world on your own. Have your own adventures. I reluctantly agreed to go home. I was going to miss my uncle. I will miss you too. But I'm sure you'll do phenomenal on your own. And don't worry about me or Maddie. We'll be fine. The pad is yours, boy. When you're ready. Thanks for almost killing me hundreds of times. That's the end of the story about my uncle. Ugh. Apparently, this is my first playthrough I've, I've been doing on this channel. I'll be doing on this channel. I don't know how well it'll do, but it depends on my um, like motivation stuff. I may do another playthrough of a game called Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, which is like one of my most memorable childhood games. 
like this game, I won't be doing a 100% run because, you know, I'm a lazy fuck. But yeah, we'll see how that playthrough comes about. And we'll see how this playthrough will do. And therefore, thank you for watching me complete a story about my Sweetie. Wait, Dad. Does that mean Fred is still there? Who knows? That was the last time I saw him. Don't you miss him? I do, sometimes. But I don't worry about him. Because I know that wherever he is, he's on his biggest adventure yet. Right. Dear Fred, today... I step into the lobby of your house for the last time. My daughter asked me to tell her about an adventure, and I came to think of you. Your house looks just like my mother and I left it years ago. After you'd gone, I was sure she was going to throw out all your stuff, but she just cleaned up. We made you a small memorial. For a while, I came here every day, just like I used to. Sometimes, I could even faintly hear your voice calling from the observatory, asking me to get you this tool or that. I never told my mother about that day. I don't think she would have believed me. Can I believe it? After all these years? Fred, thanks to you, I have found an even greater adventure. Thank you. Love, your nephew. <laughs> 